All right, Sarah, I'm so happy to have you on the show today. And you know, I always love asking in the very beginning what somebody's life was like before they became who they are today. I'd love to hear your story because I know you have a similar story in a lot of ways to me. And I'd love to hear kind of how you got here. You know, I always love telling this story because it helps me relive why I'm doing what I'm doing. But if you went back to my teenage self and told me I'd be podcasting and in front of people, um, I would say you were crazy. I'd also say you were crazy that I was in the health industry because I was a very picky eater. But back then, I obviously knew something just wasn't right. And my family ate the standard American diet. No one had a weight problem. So why would they even care if they were eating the pizza and the Ben and Jerry's? There was no issues. But when I ate that stuff, it just didn't sit right. And so I was following all of the wrong healthy food guidelines back then, the no fat diet, sugar was fine, just load up on it because your body will burn it, especially I was an athlete. And that was a big part of my life. I was a rower and also a volleyball player in high school and a rower at the national level. So I was trying to feed my body to fuel it to win. And I also was very a good student. I went to Stanford. I was trying to do all the right things and really didn't know what I was going to end up getting into, which then my path went into real estate and stock market stuff. But as I was going along my journey, my health just kind of seemed to dwindle a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And as you know, Betty, as we get older, we can't get away with things that we could when we were younger. And I was um, pregnant with my second child. And I thought I was going into early delivery or labor um, at 23 weeks. And I was actually only having intestinal spasms. So good news, bad news. The baby was fine, but I sure wasn't. And the doctor was stupid enough to give me narcotics while I was pregnant. Um, so who knows how amazing my child would be without those narcotics. But fast forward to after all of my pregnancies, my body was drained. My body said, I give up. Um, we're sacrificing everything for these children through the breastfeeding, everything, and we're leaving you as a shell of a person. And you have no gut, you have no digestion, you have no thyroid, your PCOS, which thank God I was able to get pregnant, but with the help of Clomid, because no one told me that PCOS was connected to insulin resistance and thyroid issues, which it was. And so as I hit my rock bottom, I finally came across my mentor who was a practitioner who essentially peeled my health like an onion. And he said, Sarah, you have zero digestion. I don't know how you walked into my office. You have no thyroid. You have no energy. It is out of pure will and your type A personality that you're getting out of bed and doing what you're doing. And I started crying because finally someone knew what I was going through. So fast forward, I addressed the PCOS. I changed my diet. I started cleaning up the heavy metals out of my body, doing that protocol. And as we were going through all of this, fast forward to when my eldest turned nine, he was diagnosed with leukemia. And that's when my world stopped because you can do whatever you want with me, but when it comes to your child, then that's a game changer. And I'll never forget when I was getting that diagnosis and we saw the, the leukemia cells under the microscope, he looked at me and he goes, mom, why are you crying? You're going to fix me. And it was that moment when I said, you're right, I'm going to attack this. Like I've attacked every single thing else in my life, whether it's rowing or volleyball or grades or what have you. And, and within one year through my supplements, my flagship product to this day is the accelerated silver. And that's all I had at my disposal back then was it not only killed all the cancer cells, but his cells looked beautiful. There was no acidity. There was no nutritional deficiencies. And you can change a nine-year-old boy's diet only so much, right? Because he's going to birthday parties and soccer things and um, eating 
eating what he's given. And I also at that time didn't know what I know now about diet. So we just did the best we could. So it said a lot about the one supplement that we had him on. And that was, you know, when we had that that clearing a year later with seeing how his blood was so much more beautiful and healthy, he looked at me again and he goes, mom, I don't understand. I told you, you were going to fix me. And so he, in his heart, knew there was no problem. But it also clued me on on one other thing, on how important it is to give a child their own motivation for eating well and taking care of that body. Because to this day, that nine-year-old boy is a 20-year-old college student and he treats his body like a temple. And he eats a diet when he is totally out of my control. He takes his supplements. He orders wild animal protein online. He never ate in the dorm. He cooked for himself. He is on point with things. Now, yes, he lives life like a college student a little bit, but he also knows where his limits are and what really is important to him. And so that clued me in on my other two kids and what their health issues were and how to direct them and teach them about diet and supplements according to what is their game changer? What drives them? You know, and, and it's the same thing with all of my clients. What's their age? What's their profile? What is their why? Everybody needs to have that why in order to make these changes that you and I talk about on a daily basis. So that was the beginning of my journey. And then with that, I knew the power of scalar technology and how to take supplements, not only what they are and have the best of the best most cutting edge natural organic ingredients, but then enhancing them with scalar frequencies to make them these cutting edge supplements that really are much more efficient and nothing like it on earth, literally, and how they can work synergistically with the body healing so that people feel a difference day one. And then they say, okay, I can do this. I'm going to listen. I'm going to follow through. It's not like every other diet that I've done a thousand times and quit day three. These things work. I feel a difference. I'm motivated. Let's keep learning and let's keep stepping forward. And so that's where I am today. So I'd love for you to, if you can, in a real simple way, just tell people, you know, because someone might hear, oh, scalar frequencies are like, I buy high quality supplements, but scalar frequency is quite different. I'm talking about the energy itself. Yeah. So scalar frequencies, it was discovered by Nikola Tesla. And what I want to explain to people about frequencies is it's like when you walk into a room and you're listening to heavy metal and if you're like me you get a headache or you walk into the room and you're listening to soft rock and it puts you into a good mood music is frequency music can be healing it can be harmful um scalar frequencies are very healing so if i play a frequency in sound to my body for let's say colitis or crohn's disease like we you and i were talking about it would be healing to us. But if the person next to me doesn't have that issue, it's not going to give them that disease or swing the pendulum in the wrong direction or over-regulate. So it's kind of like a homeopathy theory in that sense. But you can use technologies. If, if you go to my website, you'll see the Amp Coil. You'll see the Genius Insight app. Um, soon you'll see the Biocharger. These are three different examples of machines that do scalar frequency healing. Now, what we've done with the supplements, like for instance, this is the scalar silver, the accelerated scalar silver. People have heard of colloidal silver. Well, colloidal silver, number one, the colloidal particles are like boulders. They're too big. Big to get into the cells. So we use nano particles in ours. We do a little bit of colloidal because there is some benefit or topical if people are using it for acne or for skin issues, but most of it is nano. And then what we do is we program that supplement for healing frequencies, for instance, to devitalize the foreign pathogens, including the ones that are out there right now that no one's allowed to talk about. And then for the supplement like Accelerate, 
celebrated gold. Gold is known for helping with increasing IQ, for sleep, for anxiety, for depression. So we'll take the supplement and then we encode frequencies to go after those same things. So it's almost like a, a double whammy when you get the supplement and it's much more effective. So you need less of the actual supplement for the healing. And we're doing that with our accelerated thyroid supplement that's brand new. And it's very healing to all people. Very few people would not benefit from the accelerated thyroid, but we put in frequencies to detox the thyroid from heavy metals and from the, the radiation that can cause Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism, and then also to heal the thyroid. And we can go into that in a little bit when we talk about thyroid, but that is the premise of the scalar frequencies. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think people forget that our body's electric. We're energy. We're not even solid. It feels like we're solid, but we're not solid. Everything's moving at a frequency. And so imprinting frequencies to up-level that is going to make such a huge difference. So that's awesome. Now I know that you have a special love around thyroid because Amy's the one that introduced us. It's like, oh my gosh, you guys need to talk. So let's talk a little bit because you and I were talking earlier about, you know, a lot of the ways that mental health and those things get sort of wrapped into thyroid or the thyroid part of it ignored. So let's talk about that. What do you, you know, see? Yeah, I see that most people that are number one, the mental health of this country has deteriorated significantly. A mom of three, I see all of their friends suffering from anxiety and depression and all the women I come across, they're all put on antidepressants. And then they wonder why their thyroid is low or why their doctors aren't even looking at anything other than TSH and they're not feeling better on their medication. I'm not saying that there's not a place for medication. Now, do I think there's a lot of other ways you can get to improving your mood and depression naturally? Yes. Number one, iodine deficiency is the number one predictor for depression. And 96% of the United States is iodine deficient. Unfortunately, it is not in our soils anymore. And the iodine that is being extracted for supplements is coming from toxic or radioactive sources. And so people really need to be careful with the iodine supplements they're taking. That is why a lot of doctors or even functional practitioners are very cautious about giving people iodine and most of the time, people are actually reacting to another allergy from a different ingredient in the iodine supplement, or that iodine is toxic. So when you're talking about iodine, it is essential for mental health and Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, even hyperthyroidism. And I go into all of the studies on my website that actually show that overdosing on iodine, pure 100% bioavailable monoatomic iodine, like the acceleridine that both Dr. Amy and I have, is not only feeding the thyroid, but it's feeding the brain, it's decalcifying the brain, and it's also feeding all 100 trillion cells in the body. And in that form, it can be absorbed by all 100 trillion cells. In any other form, the body has to break it down. And when the body has to break it down, but it's already weak from being hypothyroid, right? The cells don't have the energy to do that breaking of the particles down. And with that extra iodine in the body, it increases ATP production by 18 times, not 18%, but 18 times. So you're getting that energy at the true cellular level. You're waking up the brain, you're decalcifying and kicking out the fluoride, the bromide, the, chlor the chlorine out of the cells, out of the brain. And a lot of people report to me after starting the Acceleridine, they say, okay, it's really, weird. I'm getting rid of all the toxic relationships in my life. I feel like my brain's awake. I feel like my mental mood, my mood disorders are disappearing. It's amazing. Well, on, on top of the acceleridine or the iodine importance, you've got the HPT axis, the hypothalamus pituitary, thyroid axis, 
axis connected to the HPA axis, which is your adrenals, and the HPG, which is the gonadal axis. So you wonder, why would your thyroid be affected by your energy from in your adrenals and also your gonads and your sex health? Here it is, um, Valentine's Day, and a lot of women going through perimenopause, menopause, their libido's going down. Even the men, they're getting man boobs, their, their libido's going down. Well, all of these things are connected. So let's look at the thyroid. And if the T4 and is not converting into the T3, which four and three stand for molecules of iodine, if those are not converted and the liver and the gut and the kidneys are backed up or we've got leaky gut, then that conversion is not going to happen. Then that is also going to affect our neurotransmitters, which are made in the gut like GABA, dopamine, serotonin. So all of these things are related. That's why I take my clients through a liver flush three to four times a year, because if your liver's backed up, then you you are not going to do that conversion. You're also not, it's going to disrupt your happy hormones and your gut. And you're going to also store the emotions of frustration and anger in the liver, right? So our, in Ayurvedic medicine, our organs hold on to different emotions. And a lot of people going through my liver flesh will actually relive some of their anger or frustrations during the two week prep. And then after it happens, they feel this whole new lease on life and letting go of those frustrations. So the other thing that people don't look at is there's something called thyro stress. So this is essentially having stress or depression caused by having that hypothyroidism. I mean, yes, you're going to wake up every morning feeling depressed over the fact that you know that you're going to have no energy. You're going to be tired in the afternoon. You're going to be gaining that weight and feeling like you're eating nothing and doing everything the doctor is telling you to do. You're probably going to two workouts a day instead of just one, or maybe now you've given up on doing any workouts because it's not doing any good. This is that vicious cycle of feeling depressed, but it's all due to that thyroid. And so it's really important to have your doctor. And I actually have one of my very best friends continues to gain weight. And she says, I don't, well, my thyroid's fine. I said, what did the doctor test? TSH. I said, let me tell you, that is not a thyroid hormone. That is a pituitary hormone. Let's look at all the thyroid hormones. And I tell my clients, you are the boss. The doctor works for you. Don't get scared for asking what you need. You need to demand these tests. You need to be demanding insulin tests, not just the blood sugar test. You need to be asking for the calcium um, tests, you need the inflammation markers. You need to be asking for the full thyroid panel because no amount of SSRA medication is going to upregulate your thyroid. And all of these, the thyroid issues are also related to PCOS, like me, erratic periods, libido, infertility, autoimmune issues. I had all of these things. Imagine that I was on the verge of Crohn's disease and you, you think, oh, well, did my doctor tell me anything about my Crohn's disease related to how to heal my leaky gut? No, they just said, That's, this is what you have. Increase your Metamucil and increase your fiber intake. That's all they told me. So the other thing that we need to look at is the radiation and toxicity that we have been bombarded with in the last two years, way above what our ancestors and even 10 years ago, what we were being exposed to. We've got 5G, we've got the smart meters, we've got these phones that are now, you are forced to go get the iPhone 13 or 14 now that are hooked up to 5G. Now, just so everybody knows, you can turn off the 5G, which I did find out. But all of these things are rattling our brain, rattling our thyroids, rattling our cells, and that radiation is causing thyroid issues, anxiety, depression, 
and we don't, our bodies don't know what to do with it. It is actually factually causing unexplained weight gain and unexplained depression, anxiety, change of mood, and that lack of motivation, skin breakouts, you know, all of these things, and then people aren't sleeping well, then that's going to cause a vicious cycle with thyroid issues, energy issues, adrenal issues, gut issues. Um, And so we really need to focus on cleansing the liver, looking at the liver, at the thyroid, and helping with our hormonal changes. It's not just about what how calories in, calories out. So I'll I'll pause for a minute and let you ask any questions. Um, but it's all related, as you know. So, you know, it's it's interesting that you talked about the you know use of SSRIs, and I don't know if you watched the the Super Bowl the other day. So probably by the time this this airs, it'll probably be a couple of weeks later. But you know, I was I was so happy that we had a, a menopause awareness you know PSA on that. But it was was of course for vasomotor problems, you know, because they're going to prescribe an SSRI because you get hot sweats and night, you know, night sweats and hot flashes and that, but we overlook the brain fog, the depression, the anxiety, the weight gain, the, you know, no libido, vaginal dryness, all these other things that women go through. And I think, you know, everybody that listens to this podcast definitely knows that I have a major problem with the gaslighting going on in medicine to women. And that all the women's health problems, particularly the pesky thyroid issues, you know, oh, that's just you've got depression. That's your problem. It's not a thyroid problem. It's depression. You know, have you found with your clients or even in your research that um, that there's obviously a relationship between between like SSRI use and and the thyroid itself? Specifically, do you see that it's harder for the thyroid to recover if somebody's on a Zola, you know, one of your SSRI meds, you know? You know, it, it's interesting when I approach, because I am not a doctor and I make that very clear that when someone is wanting to get off their medication, that they need to do it with the guidance of their doctor. But my hope is that they get off their medication, they don't need it. So through the support of the Acceleridine Iodine, with the accelerated thyroid. And then I use a supplement called accelerated keto to flip them into ketosis, boost their energy. So they're feeling good because a lot of times no one needs that medication. And a lot of times that medication has lost its ability to work after a time, right? So I will recommend using a 5-HTP as the precursor to serotonin if they need that extra support. But let's get yourself on these supplements healthily, see how your energy is, and then you report back to your doctor and have them help you get off your SSRIs. So that's the approach I take because I want to make sure that the client is in control and they feel like they are on top of their energy, on top of their mood before they try to adjust their medication. Um, So that is where I just give them that support through the supplements and the diet. And then we also look at the diet as far as what foods could possibly be hindering their progress. And a lot of things that people don't even look at, you know, a lot of people in the paleo and keto realm are just saying, you know, eat your cruciferous vegetables, eat your lean protein, doesn't matter what. Well, what I find is that you've got the amyloid proteins from the chicken and poultry. And especially with the spike protein in the last two years, which um, increases amyloid proteins in the body, you've got this double whammy. So you really have to be careful with not eating amyloid proteins. And those proteins get lodged in your tissues, get, don't get broken down by the liver, especially if your liver is backed up like most of ours are with the radiation, with the toxicity, with the GMOs, with all of those things that we're being bombarded with, even if we think we're eating clean and healthy. And then that, that extra burden of those amyloid proteins is taking down the, the ability for the liver to detox. And then you've got the oxalates which some people talk about, some people don't, but the oxalates love the thyroid. So if they're going to clog the thyroid, that's going to slow down your energy, 
um, you're going to have hypothyroidism um, symptoms, then your, your mood's going to go down, and then you're going to go to the doctor, and they're going to put you on some medication for your, for your mood and your depression. Um, but that those oxalates also cause joint pain, kidney issues, U, UTIs, bladder issues, brain fog, and it's very um, specific on how you want to get off the oxalates. But one food group that people are not talking about all the, are the sulfur vegetables, the cauliflower, the cabbage, the broccoli, the bok choy, the kale. These are the healthy vegetables that are great for binding estrogens in DIM supplements. A lot of people are taking that DIM to bind up the, the bad estrogens. Well, if your detox pathways for sulfur are backed up, or compromised, which most people are today because of the addition to the, 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 the spike protein in our environment and our exposure, in addition to all the radiation and other toxicity and GMOs, those could actually disrupt our detox pathways. So that instead of doing us some good, they're, they're actually making things worse. And I remember I had gone keto and I don't think a high fat ketogenic diet is right for anybody. It was never right for me. And once again, if your liver's backed up or if you just had COVID or if you are having a hard time um, metabolizing fat for other reasons, that's going, that high fat diet's going to back up your liver once again. So I tell people to take the accelerated keto, put yourself in ketosis, intermittent fast, let your body snack on its own fat stores for energy, but then let's focus on more lean uh, wild animal protein. But if the sulfur is backed up, um, so, when, so back, back to what I was saying, when I went keto, I was eating all of these cruciferous vegetables. I mean, tons of it because there was no calories. Um, they were delicious. They were ketogenic, right? Everything great. I looked like I was nine months pregnant and I couldn't figure out why I was doing all the right things. And I was clued in on the fact that my sulfur detox pathways were compromised. So I cut them out and literally within two days, I saw my abs again. It was wonderful. So not only that, I then did more research and I would say 90% of people have that same issue nowadays. If you have the MTHFR gene, you really have that issue or the propensity to have a, pro a compromised um, detox um, pathway for the sulfur vegetables. But those are the things to look out for, the amyloid proteins, the sulfur, the oxalates, and the, and the fats, and especially the wrong fats, the seed oils, but even too much fat. I keep my diet to the, the natural fats that come with the wild animal protein. And I stick to proteins like wild fish, um, bison, lamb, elk, Cornish game hen, organic eggs, and that sort of thing. And some people should even stay away from egg yolks because they're full of full of sulfur, but that's more individual. And through my coaching, I teach people on how to essentially become their own doctor and in tune with their, with their diet. So all of these things back to the mental health and the thyroid, they can all affect the weight gain, the brain fog. Um, and that is going to either make you feel better or worse. And then when you have your thyroid optimized, your gut is optimized, your physical and mental energy is optimized. If you are still depressed, then possibly do you need to stay on your medication? Maybe. Um, I always like to find um, solutions outside of that. But once again, you need to be working with your doctor to get off your medication. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's um. So you brought up an interesting point because I had not heard that that um that the sulfur pathway is going to be what's heavily engaged with like the spike protein or the amyloids. It is um one of those things that is the missing link, and when I give my food list and the diet for people to follow. Number one, they hear this and they say, well, that's all I eat. What am I supposed to eat? 
And then I give them this long list of amazing foods that they can stick to. What's interesting, Betty, is everybody was so afraid of lectins. I think that a lot of people can actually eat certain lectin vegetables. Now, the grains and the beans, no, because grains and beans have mold, lectins, and either sulfur or oxalate. So they're like the double or triple whammy. Um, can most people get away with zucchini, bell pepper, cucumber? Yes. Eggplant? Yes, mostly. So there's all these other vegetables to try out. And to do an elimination diet for at least one week, two weeks, or three weeks, depending on how your gut is, and then throw back in one of your favorite vegetables, see how your body reacts. It's so funny. I had a friend who I've known since college, and uh, last fall, she said, okay, this is ridiculous. I'm of normal weight, but I'm lying to myself that I'm healthy because I look pregnant and I eat everything that my kids eat. And I'm, I'm, I really need to get off of this. So she buys my cleanse and I don't hear from her. And then January comes and she goes, okay, this is ridiculous. I haven't even opened your package because I didn't want to do it yet, but I really need to do this. And my kids want me to do this. She starts it. She starts diving into my videos, diving into my food list and really following it to a T. Within three days, she texts me. She says, I am crying. I cannot believe how good I feel. I'm no longer look pregnant, but not only that, I have all of these issues disappearing that I did not know I even had. And that's the beauty of this is that you, once you start feeling good, it's like feed me cardboard. I don't care if I have all the energy in the world and I can do my life and have amazing relationships and an amazing sex life and, and go do my workout with energy that I had when I was 20. I don't really even think about food anymore because we've been taught that food is our energy. And so when we don't have the energy mentally or physically, we're looking to the next meal. What are we going to eat? What should I eat? Should I not eat that? Is that triggering my problem? But my God, I'm so disgusted with the way I look or feel. Who cares? I'm just going to have pizza and, and Ben and Jerry's. So it's this, this mind thing that goes in goes on. And I remember when I first got on this diet, and I only call it a diet. It's, it's more of a lifestyle. Um, I stopped thinking about food. I stopped thinking about meals. I started thinking about my relationships and my husband and my kids and being intentional with how I mother and how intentional how I run my business and and am with my clients and during my workouts. My workouts today rival what I did in my high school years on my um, national team. And I'm 47. I'm going through perimenopause. I feel amazing. So it, it's a true testament to the fact that you are more free and the chains are off when you follow these food guidelines um, than when you don't. So that's where with the supplements, with the dietary guidelines, with the support of the group coaching, people feel this energy, physical, physically, mentally, that dopamine to keep them going, to get them out of bed. Um, and, and it's just this chain reaction. So yes, sulfur was one of those key components People are talking about oxalates. People talk about lectins. Um, people are maybe starting to talk about amyloid proteins, but sulfur is one of those things in our industry and, and amongst um, you know people in our field, Betty, that no one's talking about. And the spike protein, yes, it is doing damage to our insulin regulation, our fertility, um, our, all of our hormones, it's making people go hypoglycemic with that increase in the insulin. So people are actually gaining weight without even eating. It's increasing the stress hormones. It's doing a lot. Now we can reverse that damage. The accelerate iodine is, is showing that it's reversing the damage to all the cells 
that has been done by the spike protein in the mRNA. And that is also enhanced with scalar frequencies. So there is always a solution. And that is why I love my job because I truly believe that God gives me problems or challenges to in my own family um, with the spike protein or with the, you know, my son's cancer or with my own rock bottom for me to find those true solutions to then be able to teach the world. Oh yeah. You know, um, you know, you sit and look at where sort of the, the nutrition world sort of swings, right. You know, like you were saying, the lectins, you know, I, we, at our clinic, we do a, a lot of Tens, uh, testing. We look at tons and tons of testing and how uh, people come in and they always want to test their lectins. Like I know is that I'm like, okay, we're, we'll test them because most of them won't come back, which, you know, opens up the food choices quite a bit. But it's, you know, it's, it's not always something that you can, we may not have the sophistication to always test for. And so a lot of times people need to go through and try things on and take things in and out. And um, you know, I think the hardest thing for women, especially if they've been doing the same thing for a really long time and it used to work to let go of that. But this is what this is what I'm supposed to do. But I'm like, well, if you've been doing it and it's no longer working, it can't be what you're supposed to do anymore. Right. It's always that. How's that working for you? Right. You put it back on them. How's that working for you? Well, it's not. Well, then maybe you want to change. And you know what? Doing something different for 30 days isn't going to kill you. Why don't you try it for a little bit? See if you feel a difference. And if you don't, go back to your old ways. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Now, so you you had PCOS, right? I did. You had PCOS. Did you experience all the sort of things with PCOS, like the infrequent periods? And obviously you were had Clomid to get pregnant. You know, in that yeah. time after after your children, did it once you started working on your health, did your periods normalize or within one month did my periods normalize when I realized it was insulin resistance and my thyroid? I had every symptom. I had acne, I had my hair falling out. My hair right now at the age of 47 is thicker than it was in my teenage and, and 20s, which is crazy because so many people are ex experiencing uh, hair loss because of COVID, because of hypothyroidism and all of these other issues. And I'm sitting here going, I'm so grateful. I've put together a hair growth protocol because I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on supplements that don't work. And I found a protocol that actually works for most everybody that does it. But yes, I had every single symptom of PCOS. As soon as I corrected my insulin resistance, as soon as I looked at my thyroid and optimized my thyroid, my hair came back and all the symptoms went away. Absolutely. No one, no doctor, uh, my fertility doctor or my regular doctor ever said anything about diet or thyroid. No one ever tested my full panel. Um, they got, yes, we use Clomid and literally within a, a month of figuring out what it was, I'm sitting here going all of that effort that I did to get pregnant those three times and I never had to do it. Yeah. Well, you don't, you don't get paid to change your diet. <laughs> The doctor doesn't make any money on that at all, at all. So if you were to, if you were to sit and say, okay, if you had, let's say a 40 year old woman in front of you and you're like, okay, she, she's pretty sure she has some thyroid problems, probably a little bit of hormone stuff. What would be your top three, like take home items? You're like, okay, these three things are where I would start regardless of kind of what, you know, what you may have read out there. Here's, here's your foundations. What would you tell them to do? For their thyroid, number one is acceleridine iodine. And that's because it helps feed the, the proper nutrients for the T4 and T3, but it's also detoxing the thyroid and the brain and every other cell of the radiation and the toxicity that leads to the autoimmune issues, the hypothyroidism, the Hashimoto's. Um, and you start slow and you increase your dosage on a, a gradual basis because as you're feeding your thyroid, you're also kicking out the, uh, the toxins. Number two would be the accelerated thyroid. And this 
combines the ancient Ayurvedic herbal supplement Conchonar Google, which we make sure that we are using the formula from the master herbalist, whereas a lot of companies out there, especially during the last couple of years, are saving money on cheaper versions of Conchonara um, and a cheaper version of the um, mix or recipe in it. And then we add it, add it to advanced glandular therapy, but then we add the scalar frequencies to enhance the general health of the thyroid, neutralize the toxins found in the thyroid, such as the chlorine, fluorine, uh, mercury, and other metals. And then it neutralizes the radiation and nuclear fallout. So those would be number two. We've got Cognoblast coming, which is amazing. It's a brain, a brain formula. Um, we're combining, once again, traditional Ayurvedic herbs known to enhance the brain function with smart nutraceuticals. And this powerful formula helps alleviate the mental anxiety, the depression, the, the agitation, fatigue, but it also enhances cognition, focus, increases the ATP production at the cellular level, um, enhances memory and learning and learning speed. But one thing I'm more excited about is as someone with both genes for, for Alzheimer's, it will actually help prevent Alzheimer's and dementia, um, decreases inflammation. So those three would be my top. If you were to say four, I would say the accelerated keto because by flipping you into that ketosis, you are cutting your sugar cravings, your ability to intermittent fast, let the gut heal, let the hormones regulate, um, stick to that wild animal protein diet, um, fill in with the vegetables that work for you, um, fill in with the fat according to your ability to digest fat and your weight goal, um, your weight goals, whether you have weight loss goals or you just want to maintain those would be the top three to four supplements I would recommend and sticking to that wild animal protein and the vegetables outside the oxalates, outside the sulfur and according to your DNA. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what about, what's your favorite hack for sleep? I always love asking about sleep because sleep, you know, I think is the magic, the magic pill for stress. What, what would be your favorite hack for sleep? I'm actually going into this in a full um, podcast because I have hacked my sleep to the point where my aura ring shows a 95 or above every single night. And that was not all the, always the case. So number one, the accelerated keto and putting you into that, that blood sugar and insulin space where your blood sugar is stable, right? Number two, a liver flush. If you are waking up between three and four in the morning, that is your liver waking you up. So you need to flush it out. Um, then I also use a supplement called Magnesium Breakthrough that you can find on my website, which is very well known and has all seven types of magnesium in it. That helps with sleep, but then I added in the new sleep breakthrough, which is also um, I've started carrying because I absolutely love it. So I add then that in at night. The accelerated detox powder. This is a supplement that soaks up the toxins throughout the day that or that you've taken in throughout the day, but it helps reduce inflammation. Amazing for colitis and Crohn's disease and gut issues. Um, but it helps with sleep. And that's one of the biggest things that people tell me um, after they start taking that. And I use the, the stem cell activation patches. So these are patches that I wear during some during the day and some during the night. My protocol at night is to wear the silent nights, which is a, for sleep and increases melatonin naturally. I am not a fan of taking a melatonin supplement, but this helps your body produce melatonin naturally. There's an aloe vita patch, which I wear on my forehead. It's for skin. And that was the first reason I started wearing it because of my vanity, wanting to make sure I don't get wrinkles. Um, but what it also helps is it helps calm the brain and helps with sleep. There's also an Eon patch that helps flip you from um, the sympathetic mode into the parasympathetic mode, calms you, relaxes you, 
it's called the happy patch, but those patches together at night really just knock me out within three minutes. And it, it is really important to address the liver, address your insulin resistance, which most people have. Um, if you've got fatty liver disease, which if you can't see your belly button, you probably got a little too much visceral fat and fatty liver, your liver is something to address. Um, and that is a big part of your, your sleep issues as well. And then you've got that vicious cycle of having anxiety, going to bed, knowing that you're not going to sleep, right? So there's this, you know, the meditation, the prayer, the writing in your gratitude journal, those types of tips. Oh, and of course, um, this one's free is to go outside every morning when you wake up, stare at the sun, look at get that sunlight for at least 10 minutes right when you wake up. That's setting your circadian rhythm for the for that night's sleep. And to top it off as a bonus is to look out at the sun, go for take the dog for a walk at dusk time. And that is also going to help set that circadian rhythm to get yourself into um, that routine. I also wake up at the same time on the weekends as I do during the week, just because I feel like if I try to sleep in, I'm actually more groggy. And then it's harder to get back into the routine on these Monday mornings. And then you really are not back into that routine until maybe Wednesday, right? So everything is kind of um, backed up and it really isn't worth it. No, no, I learned that early. <laughs> Not too, I mean, quite a few years ago now. It's just better to keep the same sleep cycle for sure, for yeah. sure. So can you tell my listeners how they may find you and reach out to you? You have a you have a, a, a group that you do and you've got lots of things, obviously your products. Yeah, so everything's at sarabantahealth.com. My podcast, my podcasts are um, on over 100 channels, Accelerated Health Radio and TV. So you can pretty much find those anywhere, but you can also hook up with those at sarabantahealth.com. My group coaching is on Telegram. I invite you. It's all free. There's no downside. Just start learning on a daily basis. I answer your questions, troubleshoot with you. I post on a daily basis. Um, clients go back and forth in, with their testimonials and their reviews. Um, and it's just this awesome group of like-minded people, which nowadays it's hard to find where there's so much isolation and so much um, anxiety and depression of just even going outside. So it's a really nice way to connect. And I can answer your questions, put together a protocol for you if you just email me directly through the website. So sarabantahealth.com is really where you can find all of it. Great. Great. Well, thank you, Sarah. It has been so wonderful having you on Menopause Mastery. And hopefully we can get back again and we'll chat again about women's health and thyroid and all that fun stuff. Would love to. It's just so you and I are aligned in so many ways on all of these topics. Awesome. All right, everybody. Have a healthy and happy day.